right. Hey guys, Mr. Kyle, Myers Mathematics, and let's just jump right into it. This is finding slope from a graph. This is part of a series on Algebra 1 worksheets, which are all those amazing worksheets your teacher gives you for homework and or classwork. So I'm here to help you out and uh, show some work, show some solutions, and uh, help you to understand this a little better. This worksheet will not be that long, actually, because it's all going to be fairly straightforward here. The process is pretty simple uh, compared to some of the other stuff that I've done in this same series. Um, slope, right? So slope. If we want slope, then we need to know, hey, well, then slope, what is, what is slope, right? What is slope? Slope is rise over run. Okay. And if you ever get this messed up, right? So this is, this is the change in y over change in x. That's another way to think about it. That's, that's what slope is. Um, if you ever get it mixed up, right? If you ever uh, get the x's mixed up, maybe you put the x's on the top and the y's on the bottom, just think about it like this. What's more slopey, a mountain or a wheelchair ramp? A mountain, obviously, right? So if you, if you picture like a steep mountain, you're going to go up more than you go over. You're going to rise more than you run. That's going to be a number like 2 or 3 or 4 or maybe even 10. If it's like really, really slopey, that's a big slope. It's very slopey. Now, if it's a wheelchair ramp, if you measure how much you go over, how much you go up, and how much you go over, you don't go up that much compared to how much you go over, how much you run. That's not very slopey. If the run is a lot bigger than the rise, that's a small number because that's a fraction, right? If you rise, let's say, one foot for every 10 feet that you run, small slope, okay? So just a general picture here before we get started. Rise over run. The rise is on the top. That tells you how slopey it is, how, how steep is the line, okay? So that's what we want to do. We want to measure rise over run. So we're going to go and start from the point on the left. So here's, here's what you do, right? So here's the steps. This is what you do. Start from the leftmost, right? So the point that is most on the left, the leftmost point. And the reason why you always want to start that way is because you'll either go up or down, and then you'll go right. Okay? So up is positive slope. Down is negative slope. Okay? And it always works out like that if you start from the leftmost point. If you go up, it's positive. If you go down, it's negative. Okay? And then, of course, you so you count the spaces. So you count the spaces to get from one point to another, right? And then you and then you run. Right? So count the spaces again. Count spaces again. And that's it. That's what you do. So you're going to start from that's supposed to be a T. Start from the leftmost point. All right, so let's do that. Here's the leftmost point for number 1. I go up. I have to go up one space. So it's a positive slope, and then I go over two spaces. I rise one, I run two, the slope is one half. That's all there is to it, guys. I rise one, I run two to get from the leftmost point to the other one, and that's my slope. Slope is one half. Okay. Um, if the slope is exactly one, it's exactly diagonal, right? So think like, think checkers or chess, right? Like some, some chess pieces, not all of them move diagonally. But in checkers, all the pieces move diagonally, unless you're playing some weird version of checkers. Checkers, you move diagonally, right? So when you think diagonally, it's like exactly diagonal. That's a slope of one. If it's more slopey than that, it's more than one. If it's less slopey than that, then it's less than one. Okay, number two. We need to go from the leftmost point, and we're actually going to go one, two spaces down. Okay, so down two or negative two. We're rising. We're not rising at all, really. We're, we're falling, right? 
So the opposite of rise is fall. So we're, we're the rise, so to speak, is negative 2. Okay. And then we go over 1, 2, there. Okay, we've got a little bit of simplifying to do now because that's actually negative 2 over 2, and that simplifies to negative 1. That's actually a slope of negative 1. And we could do that by looking at another two points. If we look at, let's say, this point and this point, go down 1, right 1, negative 1 over 1 is negative 1. Okay, so it doesn't have to be the two points that they give you. It's just that so far they're giving us nice points to work with here. So um, mine as well, right? If they're going to give us some nice points to work with. All right, let's go ahead and look at 3 and 4 here. All right, so I rise 1, positive 1, run 2. That's a slope of 1 half again. All right, number 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm going down 5. All right, always starting from the left. One, two, three, four. Negative five points. That is the slope. All right, moving on. And change color. Just keep things interesting here. Ooh, tricky one. Number five, how much are we rising? Well, we're not. If we went up one or down one, we wouldn't be able to get to that point. So we actually don't rise at all, zero we would rise zero and then run one. Well, zero over any number is zero. That's a slope of zero, okay? And that makes sense, right? If it's not slopey at all, that's just level ground, right? Like, like a normal sidewalk or walkway or something, unless you live in like a mountain village. I live in Florida where it's very flat in like 95% of places. So the slope in Florida is almost always very close to zero, all right? Everything's very flat in Florida. There's no hills, no seasons. It's miserable all year. <laughs> I love Florida, can you tell? Um, you, you rise zero. It's a slope of zero, and that's okay. We're actually going to see another kind of slope that's sort of the opposite of this in a second. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to number six. So start with the left. One, two, three, four. Rise four. Run 1, that's 4 over 1, which simplifies to 4. All right, the slope is 4. Moving on. Number 7. All right, start from the left. Count the spaces up or down. 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm going down 4. 1, 2, over 2. Negative 4 over 2. 4 halves is 2, so negative 4 halves is negative 2. All right, so here's what I was talking about back on number five. On number five, we did not rise at all, but we did run. Here we're doing the opposite. And there's no leftmost point, so it really doesn't matter which one you start with. Um, I'm going to just start with the bottom point. So we'll start here. Okay, uh, how much do we rise? One, two. Okay, so rise two, positive two. But how much do we run? We, we don't. Zero. Okay, what's 2 over 0, though? Is that 0? Is it 1? Is it 2? Is it infinity? It's infinity. Any number over 0 is not really a number at all. We can, we can kind of say it's infinity. It's infinity. Any number over 0 is infinity. I know it's kind of weird to think about, maybe, but that's just that's how that is. Now, I wouldn't say it's an infinity slope, because that sounds kind of weird. The, the way they normally want you to say this for an answer is they'll want you to call this undefined slope. Undefined. Okay? Undefined slope. I know that's like kind of a long word, but basically what that means is um, infinity is not a number, right? It's, it's Buzz Lightyear's catchphrase, right? So it's not a number. Um, zero is a number. Okay, like that, that's a legit number. Four, negative two, all these other slopes that we've gotten so far are legitimate numbers. Infinity is not a number. It's just not. Because what, like, how do you, how do, you do math? Like, you can do math with numbers. You can't do math with infinity, right? Like, like, this takes me back to kindergarten when you're like, oh, well, I'm better than you times infinity. And they're like, well, I'm better than you times infinity plus one. It's like, is, is that better, though? times infinity plus one, does that matter? No, it doesn't, right? It's all arbitrary because it's infinity. 
So I'm going to stop with my rant. I'm sorry. Sorry, not sorry. But infinity is not a number, so therefore we call it undefined while holding our pinkies up really high. Okay? So the answer to number eight, undefined slope. Moving on. Change to a different shade of green. Ah, where are the dots? There's no dots. Do you see dot? I don't see any dots. They don't get. They didn't give us dots. What, <gasps> what do we do? Okay, let's go back to our steps. Okay, start from the leftmost point. Up is positive. Down is negative. Count the spaces. Okay. Step three, run. All right. So step two is rise. Step three is run. Step one, start from the leftmost point. Now, if they don't give us points, then we actually need another step. Step zero. Right. Step zero is to is to plot two good points okay what's what's a good point All right well let me show you what what a bad point is first and then maybe we'll contrast it with a good point so here's here's a bad point how about uh how about this that's bad that's a bad point All right red is bad green is good that's bad because what is that point right um, it's, it's like maybe negative one half comma three, I guess, but maybe it's not exactly negative one half. It's hard to tell. It's like roughly negative one half comma three. So we don't, we don't want to use that. That's not a good point. If it's not obviously intersecting somewhere, then we don't want to use it. Okay. So let's look at, um, a good point. Let's see if we can find a good one back to our, our green here well this is a good point right here because that's right at what i like to call the crosshairs right this is sort of like a like a gun reference but um when you look through um a scope like if you've ever played a like a, a shooter game like a call of duty or something you look through the scope of a gun and it's got a, a, a plus right it's got a plus sign so right in the middle of the plus Right, if you're if you're trying if you're playing Call of Duty and you want to take out the bad guy, try to get that headshot. You want to try to line up his head right in the middle of the plus, so you can get that headshot. Right, so that's what we want to do here. Right, we want those headshots. Okay, so this point right here is a good point. Right, that's a headshot point. Negative one, negative two, negative three, comma one, two, three, four, negative one. This is negative three, negative one. Not that it really matters, but that's where that point is. Okay, now let's get another good point. Um, this one right here, actually, that looks like a good point. Some of these other ones look close, but if you look really closely, it's like, eh, like this one, this one's like, it looks, it looks close, but that's not a good point, actually. It's like, it's like right, right there, but not quite. This one, though, is a good one. Zero, comma, one, two, three, four. Yeah. So now that we've got two good points, Let's count the spaces. Go up, then over. From the left, right? So start from the leftmost point. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, I counted eight spaces. I'll do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Positive eight, okay? One, two, three. Eight thirds. And that is the slope. Woof. Okay, so I spent a little bit of time talking about good versus bad points. So that question seemed a lot harder, but let's make it a little bit easier. This time I'm not going to explain the difference between good and bad points. Let's just find some good points. This one looks good. Um, this one looks good right here, too. Um, here's another one. Here's another one. Okay. So I've got four, actually. You don't need four, but just to show you, it looks like they're evenly spaced out. If you look here, it looks like they're evenly spaced out, all these points, which is good. That should happen. If, you know, if it really is, you know, if they really are good points. So let's just do the, the first two here. So let's ignore, let's ignore these. They're good points, but let's just focus on two of them, right? So start with the left. One, two, three, down three. One, two, over two. Negative three halves. That's the answer. Lock it in. Let's go. Number 11. All right, so all we did... All we did, the only difference between the first page and the second page 
is that we have to add the step zero and we need to plot two good points before we can actually get started, right? That's really the only difference, okay? So you've got to be careful to plot some good points, right? This one looks good. Uh, where else? Ooh, this one looks good. Where else? Right here? There's three of them. Now remember, we only need two, but I like to try to find all of them just because it, it's fun, I guess. Because I'm just weird like that. All right, let's do this. One, two, three, four. Okay, we're going up four. One, two, three, over three. Four thirds. Don't need to simplify. Moving on. Let's see. Mm, right here. That's a good one. Okay, where else? Um, oh, right here. There we go. Found it. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, we're going down five, negative five. One, two, three, over three. Negative five thirds. That's it, guys. That's it. That's all there is to it. Okay. Um, and actually, hey, look at this. Number 13. Doesn't that look kind of familiar? Every every point on here looks like a good point. All of these. Okay. But this is a horizontal line. Just like last time, we would not rise. We would rise zero, and we would run one. So zero. Zero slope. Every horizontal line has a zero slope. So you don't need to do this little point thing all the time. If you see a horizontal line, just remember that zero. That's faster. You don't have to, but it's faster. Okay? So that's that's my two cents. All right, number 14. Good point. Uh, that one's good. That one's good. It looks like we have a lot of good points, actually. Looks like we go up one, over two, one half. Done and done. All right. Switching colors again. Looks like they gave us another vertical line, right? Remember, a vertical line, opposite of horizontal lines, right? Horizontal lines, zero over one. Vertical lines, one over zero. I rise, but I don't run. That's infinity, but we call that undefined slope, okay? And you have to, you have to write it while holding your pinky out. I don't know if you can do that or not, but I'm going to try. Uh, I, just, I really just boxed it while holding my pinky out. But there we go. Undefined slope, pinky. Number 16, there's a good point, All right? This is step zero, remember, step zero, find good points. Uh, I don't know, that one, that one, one right there, that looks close, but I'm not super, this one looks better. That one, one looks close, it does, but I, mm, I'm not sold on it. Hopefully your teacher's not too much of a stickler and they'll count you right, even if you're just a little off on the slope, but um, just be really careful. You want to try to make sure you get two really good headshots, okay? I know, I keep using this Call of Duty reference here. I haven't actually played Call of Duty in a while. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I was playing that Call of Duty mobile game for a while when it first came out. And, uh, well, actually, not when it first came out. It was like several months after it came out because I was still playing Mario Kart Tour. <laughs> but eventually, I switched to, to Call of Duty. And uh, it's pretty good. I was starting to get get fairly decent at, at some pop sniping. But then I was like, eh, this is taking up too much time. I have other things I have to do. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That is eight spaces. Okay, I just wanted to check, make sure I was counting right here. One, two, three, four, five. Woof. That was a tricky slope. Goodness gracious. Okay, wow. And that was it. Look at that. Okay. So they put the answers in weird places. Number two is like down here, but here's, here's the answers. You have access to these answers all the time, by the way. I don't know if you knew this, but you have access. You can just Google this, and you can find the answers, right? And I say that not so that I can encourage cheating because a lot of times your teacher knows that you can find the answers, and so they require you to show your work, and you should anyways as long as there's any work to be shown. Um, but whenever you're trying to learn a new topic, shouldn't you know what the answer is so you know if you're on the right track, right? Like. You should, you should know what the answer is, and you should, like, make sure you're getting the answer. Because otherwise, you're just teaching yourself the wrong way to do something. Psh, come on. That's it for today, actually. So if you haven't already gotten my awesome free guide, it's called The Five Math Mistakes Everyone Makes and How to Avoid Them. Long title, but basically it shows you uh, some common ways that you might be getting math problems wrong, and then what you can do to not do those, a.k.a. get the right answers on your math questions. So if you like getting the right answer on your math problems, no matter what grade you're in, 
super generalized, so you could you could read that and get some good stuff out of it, whether you're in Algebra 1 or Calculus 3, okay? Um, or if you're prepping for the SAT. So go check that out. It's on my website, myersmathematics.com. Link in the description below, and I'll see you again in another episode real soon.